how's it going everybody? So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Droidica Destroyer Droid from Star Wars The Phantom Menace. Long awaited figure. I know a lot of people have waited longer than me. I'm still super excited. This thing looks incredible. Um, I just bought one for now. I know a lot of people bought at least two. I wanted to see just how big this thing is first. I mean, I have a spot cleared out right there for it. This thing is massive, but now that I have it in hand, I'm looking at it. I gotta have two. And of course, this comes in the Galaxy packaging, but it is twice as thick as a standard Black Series box. This thing is huge, but you got Star Wars The Black Series up there through this very large window. You can see the Droidica. Here we have Star Wars The Phantom Menace and Droidica Destroyer Droid. The front window wraps around on this side, and there's the side with the artwork. Nice big picture. This is awesome. Love it. Got a window on the top, and on the bottom, you got lots of small print, barcode, and some logos. And there's the back. You got the same picture that's on the side. You have a bio in five different languages. The Droidica is number four in the Phantom Menace line, and you have some more small print down there. And the bio says, complete with twin blasters on their arms, Droidica are destroyer droids designed with one goal in mind, annihilation. A Droidica can completely envelop itself in a globe of protective energy via its compact deflector shield generators. All right, I'm going to get the Droidica open and let's take a look at it. Okay, so I got the Droidica out of the box and this figure is incredible. I have not been able to put this thing down. And when I first got it open, I spent a while with this just finding all the points of articulation. All these hinges, little places where it can slide, where it can swivel. I mean, this is just... Some pretty incredible engineering. And for me, I think this is already a contender for figure of the year on engineering alone. I mean, this is just well done, but let's get a close look. We'll just start up at the very top and the sheen of this, I think looks very nice. You know, kind of a bronze look, looks good. Comes, <laughs> comes around here, looks like a big fork in the back. I do like that. But his so-called head and face, I think look great. Nice, you know, very bright red there on his little sensors. This little bit there is actually corrugated. They didn't have to go that far, but they did. I mean, that is a nicely detailed thing right there. I love that. And then from here down, you have, you've got some just sick sculpt work. I mean, that just looks great. Got this little plate there. You have a functioning piston there. That's just awesome. Yeah, but all the hoses, the hinges, the sculpt work, his spine, his blaster cannons. Just nicely detailed. Well done. I mean, you could go as far as maybe adding some, some very light silver dry brushing throughout, you know, to bring out even more detail. I'm not going to go that far yet, uh, but, but man, this just looks so good. Looks so good. Now this right here, is it just me or does that look like a little chair for someone to sit in to pilot this thing, right? You got some little control levers. I mean, it'd have to be a very tiny person, but that's what that kind of looks like. That's cute. Um, but these back here, you know, can move. And again, the sheen of these just looks really good. It kind of looks like purple in some light and then bronze in other light. It just looks good. The legs are cool. Got some silver. So hinge, hinge, swivel, swivel. I mean, there, there's points of articulation all over this thing, but from head to toe, it's an awesome looking droid. All right, so I think we can all agree that this thing looks incredible, but let's look at articulation next. So I'll just start up here. So his head is on this little track right here, and it can extend out. Now, be super careful with this because this is on a very small ball. You don't want to go pulling that too hard. So I just get it started, and then I grab right there and then finish pulling the rest of the way because you don't want to break it. And it's not the smoothest thing in the world. Okay, but that will just slide right down this little track. Okay, so that is one, that's one thing there. And then to put it back in, I actually grab it there and start feeding it back in and then just give the final push on his head. Okay, because you don't want to break this. So the head itself is on a little ball. Okay, it can move in all directions. And again, be super careful. Now, I don't know if over time this is going to loosen up and the head is just going to flop down. I don't know, you know. Just be mindful, okay, but you got a ball joint there. Now up in here, you have lots of, of, of hinges. Okay, so this whole little bit right there can move. And also this front bit can also sort of flex back and forth a little bit. It's just kind of cool. And then up here at his arms, okay, so you have some in and out there, okay, for his blaster cannons, which look great. 
you have some hinges there that can go out, okay, but they don't stay. There are some detents that will catch. Uh, gravity kind of takes over and they kind of fall back down. Okay, just be mindful of that, but they do go all the way up to there and then they can, of course, flex forward and back. All right, you have you know, this working piston there, which is just awesome. Then you have a joint there. You have swivel here, okay? There's so many points that can move on this thing. And then his actual spine, okay, you have a joint there. And then you have another joint right there. And then there's another joint down here. All this can flex. Pretty amazing. Actually, this is not, well, yeah, it's really just here and here. This right there in the very middle can just sort of, you know, flex a little bit. But yeah, there and there. And of course, these can move, you know, in and out. The legs can go all the way up to there. They go down that far. And then the knees, well, if you want, yeah, I guess that's a knee, can go back and forward that far. And there's a swivel here. Okay, same thing on these. Okay, and that far up. Let me get his arm out of the way. It can go all the way up that far. And again, they can swivel. And then same thing on this leg. And I almost forgot, on the two front legs, you have a swivel right there as well. But without a doubt, the star of the show is this piston. I absolutely love that. So there are so many places where... Oh, hang on real quick. All right, so back here on this third leg, there is a detent. So you almost have to have it kind of tall. And speaking of height, okay, so the Jordica is about six feet tall. And I think this thing scales pretty well. Okay, so when he's like this, it's about six inches tall. But if you have this out at all, it can fall down. Okay, you can feel a detent catch right there. So that's kind of the happy spot. Same thing on the two front legs. Okay, which looks pretty good. I mean, that is not bad. That's a good height. It's a good stance. Okay, but if you have it any lower, like right there, it can fall. Okay, just be aware. But yeah, he's got so many points of articulation. Again, this thing is well engineered. Now, this one is a little looser than that one. Okay, and something tells me a lot of these joints could loosen up over time. Okay, but man, it looks incredible. So next, let's talk about rolling mode. And there's a couple of different ways you can do this. And I haven't found a perfect way yet. I mean, it doesn't look terrible, uh, but I'll show you what I do. So the first thing I do is just go ahead and extend his head out. And again, I grab here. I don't pull from the head. I start it with the head and then pull by this thing. Okay, so I get that to there. You can fold the arms back and up. Okay, fold back and up. Okay, there's a hinge there. You can just fold those blaster cannons out of the way. Then he will break right. He will not break. He will flex right there and right there. Okay, so you can bend that down right there at this hinge. And then you can fold him again at this hinge right there. And this little square bit right there will actually engage in this little area there. And we'll just kind of sit there. And again, this thing can flex all back here. Okay, so that's that. And then you can sort of tip his head in a little bit. And then the legs, you can just fold those in. Like so. And then these can stay out. Okay, give them a surface to roll on. And then you can sort of fold the arms in like that. Okay, so that is one way. And it doesn't look terrible. I mean, it kind of looks like he could roll like that, right? And you can display him like this, okay, because he has something to sit on. His legs folded up like that. Okay, so that is one way. And again, it doesn't look terrible. It's not a perfect ball. Okay, but it's not bad. Okay, so that is one way of doing it. Now you can also, if you take this back leg, turn the swivel all the way around and fold it up and maybe even below this little fork looking thing back here. You can do that and then you can fold these legs in. Okay, swivel the front legs up and in like that. And then just, that's another way. But if you do it this way, he has nothing to sit on. Okay, you can't display him like this. It's a little more of a ball, all right? But if you think about it, when these guys are rolling, okay, when they stop and pop up, it appears that their legs are on the bottom, okay? So they can just pop up. Having the legs tucked up all in here, to me, just looks a little weird. And again, you can't display him like that unless he's sitting sideways like that. Now, this looks like a ball, right? 
But you know something else you could do? You could bring these two front legs out just a little bit and have the feet somewhat in line with his top. That is a little more of a ball. And if you look at it this way, he has a little more surface to roll on. Okay. Um, that's not too bad. So that's another option. I don't know. For me, I think I'm going to keep it like this. You just fold these legs back out, swivel them around, keep them on the bottom. Okay, like that. Then you could tip this back because all this up here can move. And then you can display him like that. It's not a perfect ball, but you get the idea. And then, of course, putting him back in normal mode. And just extend the legs out. Okay, like that. Okay, so now he's like partly transformed. Okay, then you can flex his back back up. And then you can slide his so-called noggin back in. Boink. Okay. And oops. See what I mean? This back here, I think for me already, just monkeying with it, is starting to loosen up. Okay, there's the detent right there. And then you could flex that out a little bit. And then fold his blasters down. And he's ready to go. And then you can, you know, tilt his head like he's looking at something. It's just a wicked figure. I absolutely love this thing. Hours of entertainment just trying to figure out what moves on this sucker. All right. So that's, I mean, that's really all I can say. Other, other than, you know, the fact that I could go on and on about all the sculpt work in here. I mean, it's just a good looking figure. So for now, I'm just going to have him like this. So let's go stick him on the shelf and let's see what he looks like there. And here we are. And wow, this, this figure is just awesome. Even right down to the nice bright red there on his sensors. That just looks so good. Now, as far as scale, I think he scales pretty well. I mean, the Jordica is six feet tall. There he is next to a clone. I would say that's pretty spot on. But man, what an amazing looking figure. Oh, and if you're familiar with my channel, you probably noticed something different here. So I put a little riser all the way across the back of that top shelf because the prequel section of the display is starting to grow. So I can start double stacking things up here on the top. So I don't have to make too many adjustments from here down, right? That just made sense. So yeah, I put that little riser all the way across the back. So I think that's going to help a lot. But man, this Droidica, I'm so happy with this thing. Just an amazing figure. So bottom line, I'm kind of blown away at this. I mean, from, from the engineering, the sculpt work, even right down to his armor plates, how it kind of changes from like bronze to purple in certain light. I mean, that just looks, it's just awesome. I am very, very happy with this figure. It's one of the best in the line, you know, for me already. I mean, it's just, it's just super cool. But just like always, I would love to hear from you guys. So comment below and let me know what you think of the Jordica Destroyer droid from Star Wars, The Phantom Menace. And if you enjoy videos on Star Wars, The Black Series, smack like and subscribe if you're new and don't forget to turn on notifications. I would certainly appreciate it. And something else I urge you to consider, and that is joining the channel. It is the 112th Battalion. It's only 99 cents a month. You'll get sneak peeks to upcoming videos, loyalty badges, and some custom emojis. All those wonderful things. I would definitely appreciate that. But just like always, thank you all so much for watching. See y'all next time.